years to prosperity. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The disciples said to Jesus, Now you are talking plainly and not in any figure of speech. Now we realize that you know everything and that you do not need to have anyone question you. Because of this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you believe now? Behold, the hour is coming and has arrived when each of you will be scattered to his own home. And you will leave me alone, but I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a couple of things to take note of in this morning's reading. Uh, First of all, we see that there is a difference between the baptism of John the Baptist uh, and the baptism of Jesus. Uh, The baptism of John, uh, as we heard about here, uh, St. Paul and some other disciples, they encountered uh, people who had been disciples of John the Baptist. They had received the baptism of repentance. So they had already been washed in water as a sign of their repentance, but they needed a new kind of baptism. A baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, it's kind of a subtle point. Uh, I didn't realize this until a few weeks ago we were talking about baptism at our high school Bible study. Uh, and we were talking about prefigurements of baptism in the Old Testament. And there was a lot of uh, blank stares as we were talking about this. And I realized that we as Catholics, we don't always do the best job of teaching uh, what baptism does. It's a very significant difference between us and many evangelical Christians. Uh, For many evangelical Christians, the sacrament of baptism is merely an outward sign of a repentance that somebody has already achieved, right? It's a mere external manifestation. We as Catholics believe that baptism is truly a saving act. It truly changes you. It leaves an indelible mark on your soul. So it's something powerful. And in baptism, we receive power. Now, in this reading, we also uh, see the other sacrament of of initiation. Uh, We know there are three sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. And here we see the sacrament of confirmation. That not only did these people need to be baptized, they also needed to have hands laid upon them, that the Holy Spirit would come upon them. And they were able to speak in tongues and prophesy afterwards. Right, this is a, one of those times where you see both the sacraments of baptism and in confirmation. I wonder how many times that you guys have been to a sacrament of confirmation, witnessed, and immediately after receiving the sacrament of confirmation, uh, people started speaking in tongues and prophesying. Anybody ever seen that before? All right, me neither. Why is that? Why is it that when we have confirmations today, people don't typically speak in tongues or prophesy? Why is it that many Catholics, even though they've been confirmed, they don't seem to have the power of the Holy Spirit within them? I think this is something significant for us to ask ourselves. I think that we as Catholics don't do nearly a good enough job of understanding the Holy Spirit and invoking the Holy Spirit in our lives. And it doesn't just mean speaking in tongues, you know, and uttering prophecies. There's many ways that the Holy Spirit can act in our lives. I had a priest in college seminary, he used to tell me that he had the gift of understanding when it came to the Holy Spirit. So he would, when he would uh, go out and preach to crowds of people, or when he would preach his homilies at Mass, He said that he could feel like he understood what all those in the church or in the congregation, what they needed to hear. 
when he would meet with seminarians one-on-one. He had a keen understanding of what those seminarians needed to hear from them, needed to hear from him. There are many different ways for the Holy Spirit to act. And it's not just the flashy ways like speaking in tongues and uttering prophecies or being slain in the Spirit or anything like that. The Holy Spirit works by giving us the gift of knowledge, understanding. He increases our piety. He gives us courage, increases our love for Him. Those are all the different ways that the Holy Spirit can work in us. So I wonder if you've ever reflected on that. What are the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given you? Do any even come to mind? Something we should probably be praying a lot more about. 